What's up guys, I'm Arsene from RossMerdTech.com and this is another tutorial in assembly programming. Now in this class I'm going to talk about conditional jumps based on equality. So let's get started. Now what are conditional jumps based on equality? If you guys watched my last class on conditional jumps, you learned that uh, JZ, JNZ, and so on and so forth, they base their jumps on the status flags, right? It, it'll compare two operands and if the status flags meets the certain criteria of that jump, then it, the jump will happen, otherwise the jump won't happen. They do the same thing, but the difference is they don't look at the status flags at all. They just base their jumps on whether or not two apparents are equal. If two apparents are equal in, in the case of JE, then the jumps happen. Now, JE is equivalent to JZ. Again, if the only difference is JE just jumps based on the two apparents. If they're equal, then they jumps. Now, JNE jumps if the two apparents are not equal. So if the two apparents are not equal, then the jump happens. Now this is JCXZ. This is jump if CX is zero and I'll show you how that works in a second. Let's open up MU8086. Let's start off by moving around some values. Let's um, start off by moving into AX a value of 100. Let's move into BX the value of 100. So now we have an AX value of 100 and BX we have a value also of 100. All right, so let's use the compare instruction CMP and let's compare AX with BX, right? So it's going to compare AX with BX and it's going to subtract the two. Basically, that's how that works. So let's use JE, jump if equal, right? And we have to create a label. Let's just say L2, right? So down here, let me create the label L2 and we have to end it with a colon. Uh, remember, every time you're creating a label, you have to end it with a colon. All right, so under this label, let's move around some values. Let's move into, let's say, dx, the value of 6, right? And underneath this uh, JE instruction, let's give it some value too. Let's say, move into dx, the value of 1, right? So let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so from the top again, we moved into AX, the value of 100, right? Now we moved into BX, the value of 100. So AX and BX both have a value of 100. So now we use a compare instruction. We're comparing AX with BX, right? So now the, the jump instruction is down here. So it's jump if equal. So it'll jump to label L2 if the AX and BX are equal. It knows if they're equal because we use this jump instruction. And they come now it'll compare AX and BX and it does not look at the status flags and it'll jump if both operands are equal. In this case, both operands are equal, so the jump will happen. So let's open up this emulator here. Let's, uh, first off, let's move this up here. So, and let's move this up here. All right, so now again, it's not gonna look at the status flags at all. Let's hit single step. Now our uh, AX has a value of 100, right? Now let's hit single step. Our BX has a value of 100. This, the way, uh, this over here, it's 64 because this is the hexadecimal of 100. This is 64 again because this is the hexadecimal of 100. So AX and BX both have a value of 100 over here. So now the compare instruction is highlighted. Once I hit single step, it's going to compare the two. Now our jump instruction is highlighted, right? So it, it, it'll look at both operands. If both operands are equal, it's going to jump to label two. And this is label two, right? And it's going to highlight the first instruction in label two, and it's going to bypass this instruction here. So let's hit single step. And as you can see, it bypassed this instruction. It's because it, both operands were equal. And it, it, it would jump straight to the label. And in this case, is label L2. And it's highlighting the first instruction under the label. So once we hit single step, DX should have a value of six. So let's hit single step. Now DX here has a value of six. So let's try another one. Let's open this up here. Let's try J and E jump if not equal, right? So let's keep both operands the same value, but let's just add an N in the middle here between J and E. So now we have to first close this here. All right, so let's start off by making this J and E jump if not equal, right? Uh, so it's going to do the same thing, right? In this case, the operands are equal, so the jump should not happen. So let's hit emulate. So our first uh, line of code is highlighted. Move into AX the value of 100. Hit single step. AX has a value of 100. This is just the hexadecimal value of 100 here, 64. 
All right, the next step is highlighted. Move into BX, the value of 100. Let's hit single step. Now BX has a value of 100. The compare instruction is highlighted. So let's move single step. Now the jump if not equal instruction is highlighted. So this will only jump if both operands are not equal. In this case, both operands are equal, so the jump won't happen. So let's hit single step. And as you can see, the jump did not happen. It just moved to the instruction right underneath. All right, so now let's make them not equal to each other. So let's make, let's first close this. Let's make them not equal to each other. Let's make this one 200, right? So now they're not equal to each other, so the jump should happen. So let's hit emulate. So our first instruction is highlighted, move into AX, the value of 200. So let's hit single step. Now AX has a value of 200. This C8 is a hexadecimal of the value of 200. So our second line of code is highlighted, move into BX 100. Let's hit single step. Now our BX has a value of 100. So the compare instruction is highlighted. So let's hit single step. Now we're highlighting our jump if not equal instruction here. So it'll jump if both operands are not equal. So in this case, both operands are not equal, so the jump should happen. It should bypass this instruction and jump straight to this one here. So let's hit single step. And as you can see, it jumps straight to this instruction here and bypass this because both operands were not equal. So that's how that works. Let's try the last one here, J, C, X, C, jump if C, X is zero. So I'll show you how that works right now. All right, let's delete this here. I'm just gonna delete all this. And let's move around some values. So let's move into CX, the value of say one, all right? Let's move into AX, let's say the value of one. So AX and CX have a value of one. Now let's use a subtract instruction. SUB is the subtract instruction. Let's subtract CX. We want CX to be the destination operand because CX has to be altered. Right? If, and it, the, this jump is going to be based on whether or not CX is equal to zero or not. So let's subtract CX with AX, and we want CX to be the destination, right? Let's use the J, C, X, Z instruction jump if CX is zero, right? So in this case, CX is zero. And let's create a label, L2, right, again. And let's also create the label down here, L2, comma, I'm sorry, L2, colon, and let's give it uh, some values underneath this label. So let's move into, say, dx, the value of, let's say, 1. And under here, let's give some values under this jump here. Let's say move into dx, let's say, 6. Let's start from the top. We moved into cx, the value of 1, right? We moved into ax, the value of 1. And uh, we subtract CX with AX. CX is the destination operand, so the results will be stored in CX. In this, in this case, 1 subtracted by 1 is 0, so CX will have a value of 0, right? So now this jump instruction is right under it. So this jump instruction only jumps if CX is 0. So it'll only jump to L2 if CX is 0, and it'll completely bypass this if CX is 0. So in our case, CX is 0, so let's hit emulate and find out. Our first line of code is highlighted, move into CX, the value of one. Let's hit single step. CX over here has a value of one. Now our second line of code is highlighted, move into AX, the value of one. Let's hit single step. Now AX here has a value of one, right? So now it's highlighting our subtract instruction. It's going to basically subtract CX and AX. CX is our destination operand, so the results will be stored in CX. So one takeaway one is zero. So CX should have a value of zero. Now let's hit single step. Now, as you can see, CX right here has a value of zero, right? Because we used the subtract uh, instruction. Now it's highlighting our jump here, J, C, X, C, jump if CX is zero. So in this case, CX is zero. So the jump should happen and it should bypass this instruction here. So let's hit single step. And as you can see, it completely bypassed this instruction and went straight to here. Let's hit single step. Now DX has a value of one. Let's uh, first close this. Let's make CX have a value of more than zero. So let's let's make this an add this time. AX and CX will have a value of two and the jump won't happen because this jump is based on whether or not CX is equal to zero. So let's hit emulate. Our first line of code is highlighted, moving to CX the value of one. Let's hit single step. CX has a value of one. Our second line of code is highlighted, moving to AX the value of one. Let's hit single step. 
x has a value of 1. Now our add instruction is highlighted, right? So now once I hit single step, it's going to add ax and cx, which both have a value of 1, right? So, so th then it's going to move the results into cx because cx is our destination operand, right? So let's hit single step. And over here, as you can see, cx has a value of 2 because cx is the destination operand. Now our, our jump instruction is highlighted, jcxz, jump if cx is 0. In this case, cx is not 0 because cx is 2 because we used the add instruction. Should the, jump, the jump should not happen, and then we should go straight to this line of code here. So let's hit single step. And as you can see, we move down to this line of code here, moving to dx to the value of 6. So let's hit single step. Now dx has a value of 6. So that's pretty much it. That's how that works. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissen from RossmoreTech.com, and thanks for watching.